Hey everybody, welcome back to The Brave and the Boys. I'm your host, Jake, and today, to celebrate the amazing year of 2023, I have my largest end of the year haul. So there's like 30 plus books here. I have not read all of them yet, so sorry, I'll get to them later. I'm gonna give you guys a little reasoning as to why I bought each one. I'm gonna break it up into thematic sections. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. This was an incredible year. This was the year I got promoted. I got married. This was the year we got serious about the channel. The year I connected with many of you. And it means the world to me. So I wanted to give you guys one of your favorite kind of videos to end the year. So I just want to say really fast, if you want to pick up any of these books, you can use our sponsor, Organic Price Books. There, if you're buying one to three, you can save $2 with the code BRAVEBOYS. Or if you're buying four or more, or 30, you can save 5% with the code BRAVEBOYS SIT. Let's dive into this crazy haul. Deep within a bleak and dismal swamp, hidden beneath its murky waters, lies the headquarters of the most sinister villains of all time. The Legion of Doom. Coming up first, we're going in strong with my Marvel Omni Haul. So the theme of this one was completing runs as best I could that I started. So for those of you that know, my heart lies with DC. I love indie too, but my heart really goes with DC. I talk about how when I read DC, it's like I'm reading my world. And Marvel, it's like I'm visiting another world. So Marvel is awesome but I am not the biggest Marvel fan. We don't cover Marvel as much on this channel, as much as I'd like. It's just because I'm not as familiar with Marvel. So uh, here's why I got each one. Thor 2, I wanted to complete the Jason Aaron Thor set. So Jason Aaron is awesome. I got to meet him at WonderCon, which is incredible. And I have always wanted to read this run. I had heard amazing things about the Unworthy Thor storyline, and I've always wanted to read it. And I cannot wait to sit down and read all that Jason Aaron Thor goodness. I liked the Thor movie with Gore the God Butcher, but it didn't hit as powerful as I knew the comics would. Then we have Thunderbolts 1. So I had Thunderbolts 2 and 3. I know the Thunderbolts are kind of like the Marvel Suicide Squad, so it's like a team of villains. I know the Thunderbolts is getting a movie soon, so I'm really excited. Uh, I know there's some upcoming Thunderbolts, Omnis like Uncaged or Thunderbolts Red that I'm excited to read, but I heard that the first one is one of the best and I'm happy that I waited. This is one of those awesome books where I didn't pay out of print prices for, so when it came back around and I got to buy it at a good price, it was wife approved, which we want our books to be wife approved. Uh, moving on, we have Wolverine 4. I will say this cover is cool, but it looks kind of wild next to the spines of the other ones. Um, but yeah, I have only read part of Wolverine number one, but Wolverine is my favorite X-Men and I can't collect all the X-Men books, but I can at least collect the Wolverine one. So this brings me up to date on Wolverine. Moving on to completing runs, we have the final Ed Brubaker Captain America. Ed Brubaker is on my Mount Rushmore of comic book writers. And now I have the entirety of his Captain America run. And I was told, by dear friend of the channel, Omnidog, you gotta wait until you have all five Omnis, which I did, and I didn't pay out of print prices for it. I waited for four and five. So again, double wife approved. And lastly, we have Daredevil by Mark Wade, volume one. This is controversial to some people because after six years of making Daredevil have the worst life ever, you know, just horrible thing after horrible thing, they're like, hey, what if Daredevil was a little happy? Or what if he was fun? What if he was light? But you know what? Daredevil is my favorite Marvel vigilante, so I want to collect as much as possible. So I know a volume two is coming out soon. I'm going to snag that. But again, I'm happy that I waited and didn't pay out of print prices. I learned my lesson this year. Don't buy out of print Marvel books because Marvel pumps them back into stock a lot more than DC does. Let's move on to the next section. Up next, we just casually have almost all of the Sandman universe that I could find. So for those of you that don't know and new to the channel, I got an incredible deal on the Morpheus Masterpiece Helm Edition. And if you want to watch a complete overview of this and how it compares to the other Sandman versions, you can watch that video here. But I thought might as well get the rest of the Sandman universe. So number two, we're going to have Lucifer one and two. Lucifer obviously being the Lord of Hell who decides to leave Hell during the Sandman story. So it spins up out of that and it's incredible. I really only know the TV show, so I'm pretty sure he's not a detective solving crimes like in the TV show but it's supposed to be an incredible storyline. I've read bits and pieces of it and it's fantastic. Moving on from that, we have Books of Magic 1, 2, and 3. 
I know almost nothing of Books of Magic other than it looks like Harry Potter with a skateboard starring a kid named Timothy. The covers look wild and amazing. I've heard that it starts off really strong and kinda doesn't finish that strong. You know, I'll have to read and see for myself, but I am excited that apparently this does spin off out of the Sandman universe. We also are going to have Hellblazer by Garth Ennis. I know we do not have enough Hellblazer collected. There's not enough Constantine love in this world, but I'm happy that I got an incredible deal on that. That was a Black Friday deal. And lastly, we have the newest one on this list, which is The Dead Boy Detectives, now a major Netflix show. So I'm excited. I'm hoping the show is good. I, I'm going to watch it with my wife. But yeah, they're like, they solve mysteries. One of them might be a ghost or they see ghosts. I don't know. But again, it's all about that Sandman world, which I cannot get enough of. Crazy. That one book spawned an entire world of amazing stories. And it's like a little sub universe in the DC universe. So if you want to see what other DC books I got, keep watching for the rest of this video. Up next, we have one of my favorite sections of this haul. That is the absolute edition section. And yes, maybe some of these aren't technically absolute editions. Some of them are deluxe editions or martini editions, but yeah, they got their oversized and they got slip cases. So these are books that I'm very excited to own. Up first, we have Parker volume one and two. Now I will be honest, I had volume two a long time ago. I never showed it off in the, cha the channel before because I didn't have volume one. Volume one was hard for me to find. I kept searching online. It wasn't horribly out of print, but it wasn't easily available but I did finally snag volume one. So now I have all of Parker. So Parker is done primarily by Darwin Cook, written and illustrated by my favorite DC artist and writer of all time. So I knew I had to own it. Sadly, he never got to finish it. So from what I know, it was taken up and finished by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. So it's the story of a private eye and the art style is incredible. The, the pages, which I'll show up some images right now, are like yellow and blue. So they're all like old newspaper style. And it's just such a gorgeous, gorgeous book. Up next, we have the three Why the Last Man absolutes. These were given to me by my dear friend of the channel, JP from Organic Price Books. I know not all three of these are in print. I think one and three might be. I think two is the out of print one. But with books like this and like Preacher, I think they cycle them around where eventually all of them are in print. So why the last man I've never read before. I've always wanted to. I know Jordan just picked up the Omni. So we're both excited to read it and review it on the channel. But why the last man tells the story of a virus that comes in and wipes out all of mankind, not humankind, mankind, everything. But I believe it's the main dude and his monkey possibly. Um, again, I don't know anything about it, but he has to deal with being the last man in a world full of women. And lastly, we have a book that I got an absolutely unhinged deal on, and that is The Incal. So The Incal, I've always heard good things about from friends of the channel like Bunk or Omar. And the other day, I was passing a Saturday afternoon by doing the Organic Price Books Whatnot streams where they sell their slightly damaged books. And when I say slightly damaged, I mean, you'd have to be crazy to think these books are even remotely damaged. And I scored this book in an auction for like $24. I think it's usually like a hundred bucks, but this has incredible sci-fi art. It's an incredible world. I think, I, I don't know all the context behind it, but I've heard it was the origin to the fifth element, or at one point this was what he was trying to make, but that also gets mixed up with Valerian, so I don't know for sure, but this is a gorgeous deluxe edition, the size of an absolute. It comes with a little art book in the back, and it just looks like an amazing sci-fi story, one of the ones I'm gonna read next. Let's jump on to the next section. Next up, we have the indie section. As all of you know on comic book YouTube, I am the premier voice of indie comics. Sorry, Mitch, sorry, Bunk, that's me. Just kidding. I'm kind of a dummy. I just found out, if you look here, only volume two is out of the shrink wrap. I read volume two thinking it was volume one. I thought it was this crazy world that they just throw you into. I have not read the first volume of Lazarus. That's insane. It's like, I, I gotta go back and read it. I read volume two thinking it was volume one. But Lazarus, what is Lazarus? This story is set in the future where the world is controlled in an oligarchy with rich families who all have these badass assassins that work for them called Lazaruses. And 
it's just a, an amazing story. I mean, I gotta read volume one and see if it's as good as volume two. And then we have volume three of Invincible. So this completes my hardcover collection. See, I'm someone that likes collecting. So as soon as I was done with the paperback compendiums and they heard they were announcing hardcover compendiums, I said, I gotta go back and recollect it. So I sold the paperback and bought the hard cover compendiums. Invincible, incredible. You got to check it out. Amazing series. And then you can know, like, then you can watch the TV series with your friends and kind of look over every time something big's about to happen. So Invincible, one of the most satisfying endings of any comic book series ever. Then we have Manifest Destiny. I don't know anything about Manifest Destiny, but other than like the philosophy of America back in the day. So I heard it's an incredible story. It was recommended by both friends of the channel, Jess Bragg, Omnidog, and Mitch, so I had to check it out, looked awesome, and I am very excited to read it. And lastly, I got this one just because Jordan would not stop saying, Jake, when are you going to collect Hellboy? Jake, when are you going to collect... even gave me the first trade paperback and said, here you go, now you can collect Hellboy. So you know what? We'll do a giveaway for that first trade paperback. Comment down below and say, Jake's Hellboy collection is bigger than Jordan's. <laughs> Just kidding, he has the library editions. Jake's book is bigger. Okay, no, for real. Comment hashtag Hellboy down below and I'll pick one of you as a winner for the first trade paperback. But yeah, I have most of Hellboy in chronological order and a really giant size and it's bigger than a traditional Omni and it's super cool. And I don't know if I'm ever gonna read it, you know, cause I don't really like big books. I like small books, but yes, I'm excited that someday I can read Hellboy and talk to Jordan about it. Let's move on to the section you're all waiting for, the DC section. Now we're into my favorite section, which is the DC section. So up first, we have the Super Sons Omnibus, but not just any version, the Super Duper Edition. So yes, I did have to have the fun conversation with my wife. Uh, I'm going to say this one wasn't wife approved at first because I had to explain to her why I needed the extended edition and the super duper edition. But you know what? She won. I sold off the extended edition and that helped fund this one. So Jake math, it was free. I actually made money getting this book, right? That's, that's how it works. Uh, then we have brightest day. Brightest day was because of friend of the channel, Chris Balga, host of the world's finest true believer podcast and like six other podcasts. If you want to watch a stream with me and him, you can watch that here. Uh, I sent him a picture of my Green Lanterns because I wanted to make sure my books were in the right order. And he goes, what about Brightest Day? So the joke is that he forced me, he strong-armed me into buying it. But no, I'm really glad I have this because weirdly enough, I've had a bunch of people comment or message me on Instagram and Facebook and stuff asking the right order to read or collect Green Lantern in, uh, the Jeff Johns and Green Lantern course. So you know what? I might do a video on that or short on that because it is a little confusing. Like when do you read Blackest Night versus Green Lantern Volume 2? So there is kind of an art to that. And then we have a newer one on the list, the Wonder Woman by Gail Simone. So Gail Simone is a writer that I never even knew how much I loved her, but I found out she was the writer behind my favorite episode of Justice League Unlimited, the one where Green Arrow and Black Canary go on a double date with the Question and the Huntress. So I'm super excited to read her Wonder Woman. This is actually the first Wonder Woman book I own besides the copy of Dead Earth that Jordan loaned me that I'm never gonna return. Shouts out to that book. And uh, lastly, on this side, we have the Justice League Dark New 52 Omni. Now, here's the thing. I haven't read the New 52 run, but I have read the Rebirth run, which was announced for next year. And I wanted to have, you know, a full run of Justice League Dark post New 52. So I am excited to get this. I heard it's really good in the beginning and kind of dips in the middle, but I'll read it and tell you guys my own thoughts. Moving on from that, we have The Flashes by... Jeff John, so all three. And what I will say is that this was kind of a fun story. So an aunt of ours gave us a late wedding gift, which was like a fat Amazon gift card. And I was joking that like, oh, it was my aunt, so I could use them on comic books. And my wife was like, okay, you can use you can use that that gift card on comic books. If you do five tasks for me this weekend, you can't say no to any of them. So like all weekend long, I was like Mary Poppins doing like all the laundry and like setting up tables and you know, but it was fun. I earned those and I used a gift card so they were free. Then one that's super exciting is Batman Eternal. That was the one out of print Batman Omni that I didn't own. And I can't even tell you how many nights there were where I would be eBay searching and there'd be a Batman Eternal for only a couple hundred and I would always want to add it to cart. But no, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. And the feeling 
of finally slipping because I've had a gap in my bookshelf because sometimes I'll leave gaps if I know a book is coming out so you don't have to reorganize the whole shelf and that feeling of sliding in that Batman Eternal that I didn't pay out of print prices for was worth the months and months Jordan said oh you don't have Batman Eternal guess you can't read Batman and Robin Eternal yet you know but you know he hasn't read it either so he's fake and lastly I was asked once are you gonna get the hush omnibus and here is my answer I said I have the Paul Dini Omnibus and I have the Hush Absolute, so I know what's going to happen. And they said, oh, you're not going to get it? And I said, no, 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 no. That'd be too easy. I am going to say I'm not going to get it and I'm not going to pre-order it. And then a few days before releases, I'm going to try to pre-order it, even though it's probably too late. And I'm going to buy it and, you know, I'm going to own it, even though I said I didn't want it. But yes, this does collect like a little bit that's not in the Paul Dini. And, you know, I heard it's not that good. So maybe the better route is Paul Dini and the Absolute. But yes, I'm happy to own the Omni, the Absolute, and the Paul Dini Omnibus. And I think this one's fun because I remember how excited we all were for the original Hush Omnibus. And Amazon kept that listing up for years. And I'm so happy to finally own it. And yeah, this was an exciting run to complete. I want to collect all of post-crisis Batman and Omni format. So this gave me a good chunk there in the middle. And it was just, you know, really fun chunk filler in her. That doesn't sound right. Okay, let's move on to my conclusions and wrap this video up. And that's going to bring this haul to a close. For those of you that stuck with us along the way, there's the huge money shot of all the books together. Uh, and yeah, I think I might have a problem. I'm hoping... My New Year's resolution is that my hauls are a lot smaller next year. So maybe you guys can all help with that. Thank you so much for watching. Smash that like button if this was fun. Comment down below what was the best book you hauled in was this year. Ring that bell for notifications. Join the Discord. Buy our merch. Use our sponsor, Organic Price Books. There you can buy one to three books and save $2 with the code BRAVEBOYS or buy four more with the code BRAVEBOYS SIT. I want you all to have an amazing holiday season, an amazing New Year's, and I want you all to keep reading and stay brave.